When a line joining 0 to 1, or a rectangular piece of paper with 0, 1 at its edge, is folded in half, right over left, the point 1 half lies at the fold. When the line or page is then folded in half again, in the same direction, the points one quarter and three quarters are at this second fold, in that order, from the outside of the fold to its interior. Proceeding in the same way, a third fold will divide the page into eight parts and the order of the fractions in the fold becomes interesting quite different from the order of the unfolded page. The other point of interest is the shape of the folds themselves. Not the regular up, down, up, down that you might expect, but an interesting pattern that's become known as the paper fold sequence, or in some circles, the dragon curve. Imagine a piece of paper with 0 at the left hand side and 1 at the right hand side. In the middle, of course, a half. If you take that paper and fold it from right to left, then at the left side you will have 0 and 1. And on the right side, at the fold, you'll have a half. Simple enough, but continue folding from right to left in half each time and suddenly the fractions become jumbled. Not only that, we get hints of other interesting elements, including dragon curves. Here we build upon the work of Martin Bunder Keith Tognetti and Bruce Bates from the University of Wollongong, who've made a great study of paper folding and the points in such a fold. We use the wonderful free software GX Web from Saltire Software to build a dynamic model so that we can look more closely at what happens when we fold a piece of paper. Our model begins, as I've mentioned, with a piece of paper where we assign 0 to the left hand side and 1 to the right hand side. And now we begin to fold. One fold, and we have 0 and 1 at the left and a half at the, at the fold on the right. Fold a second time. The half fold has now moved to the left and at the right hand side at the fold one quarter and three quarters. Starting at the top you'll find the one quarter fold which represents a quarter of the page when unfolded. Let's have a look at the unfolded page. As expected one quarter on the left, a half in the middle, and three quarters. Fold it, and more or less what's expected. Now let's fold a third time. The quarters have moved across to the left-hand side, and along the, the folded edge on the right are the eighths. What do you notice about those fractions? Hopefully you'll see some interesting things. For instance, they're not in the order you might expect, and there's some eighths missing. You might also notice at the right bottom edge of the page an interesting shape beginning to build. This is our dragon curve. It represents 
each of the folds in turn. And it's more readily seen when the page is unfolded. Each of the folds when you unfold the page will either point up or down. The order of that defines our dragon curve. For instance, fold a page in half from right to left and the halfway point will be a fold downwards. These are represented here by the red lines. If we start at the left of the page and move across, we see that after folding four times, the page is divided into 16 equal sections. And these increase as we move across the page, 1 16th, 2 16ths or 1 8th and so on. Look at the order of the, the folds though. These are represented at the bottom by arrows showing up or down and at the top by ones and zeros. A one represents a downward fold and zero or green an upward fold. And again at first it looks all right, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. What's going on here? There's a pattern to be studied. For this, we've got some simple paper fold challenges. These are intended to guide you or your students through some of the some of the questions, some of the the interesting elements of this paper fold. For instance, the first is, can you explain why for integer values, the points for each fold are of the form 2k plus 1 over 2 to the n? You might recognise that expression on top represents odd numbers. Take any number, even or odd, double it and add 1, you've got an odd number. And if you were paying attention, you would have noticed that on the right hand side along the fold, here we have after four folds, the 16th, 1, 15, 9, 7, all odd numbers. But why is that so? It's not hard to think it through. Each numerator must be an odd number since any even terms divided by a power of 2 will have cancelled down and they'll already be in an existing fold. Now I've designed some quiz questions, very simple, gradual leading through. So we begin with the explanation and then some simple questions. When a page is folded once, the denominator of the fold fraction it's clearly going to be 2. Denominator folding 2 times. That'll be 4. And we can continue. What about folding n times? 2 to the power of n will be the number of folds after n folds. The fractions for two folds are 1 quarter and 3 quarters. What's missing from the quarters? Well, clearly, in the middle, we might expect to see two quarters. But we know already the missing fraction is 1 half. And that's already occurred. Another one, the fraction, fractions for three folds, one eighths, three eighths, five eighths and seven eighths. What's the first fraction missing? Well, I suppose that's two over eight or one quarter. And finally, fraction for four folds. What's the third fraction missing? Well, the first fraction missing would be 2 sixteenths, next would be 4 sixteenths, 
So I suppose it would be four sixteenths, and that's one quarter. So we've got our, our head around the nature of the fractions we're dealing with, but the order of the fractions becomes interesting. Now each of the quizzes has two parts. The first is a step-by-step -step explanation, and then you can skip that if, if you've done it before or you know it all, and you can go straight to the quiz. Let's have a look. Sure. Set the number of folds as four. The nth fold will have 2 to the n minus 1 terms, and each will have denominator 2 to the n. So, for instance, we've already seen three folds. You have eight. Well, it divides the page into eight parts. But at the fold, there are only four. The first and second terms are easy. We'll call them fold number one for n folds and fn2. They will have numerators 1 and 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1. What does that mean? So for four folds, the first two of the eight terms will be 1 16th and 15 16th. Think about this. Open the page out. On the left hand side, you have 0. The first fold after 0, 1 16th. On the right hand side of the page, 1 and the first fold in from there will be 15 16 and when they get folded over from right to left those two folds will be the first you come to in fact you may have noticed those two numbers the numerators add up to 16 now the next term is more interesting it's the third term of this set of folds so we'll begin by expressing the term number 3 as a sum of powers of 2. How do you express 3 as sum of powers of 2? It's 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 0. 2 plus 1 is 3. Choose the smallest non-zero term, that's p equals 1, and find the difference from the number of folds. Now it's 4 folds, 4 minus 1 is 3. Take this number as a power of 2, that's 8, and multiply by 3, 24. Why? Well, that's for further investigation. Now subtract the previous numerator, which was 15. 24 minus 15 is 9, 9 sixteenths. And if we've got 9 sixteenths, we also have the next one because they will add up to 16. So 9 sixteenths and 7 sixteenths. We could try the quiz, but I think we'll move on. The next section, can you predict the fraction for a particular position after n folds? So for instance, after 6 folds, what would lie in the 12th position? We're going to skip that for time here. We'll let you explore another time. And let's go to the last part predicting the particular position a fraction occupies after n folds. So given a fraction, where would you find it? Let's enter a fraction. Let's do, make it an interesting one. 11 sixteenths. Now given a fraction of that form, how might we predict its exact position after n folds? We'd skip the step by step and go straight to the quiz. Begin by giving the number of folds. Here, that's 4. Now, if the numerator is of the form 2k plus 1, what's the value of k? 2 times what plus 1? Take 1 from 11, you get 10, and half that is 5. Since 5 is odd number, it can be expressed as 2 cubed, 8, minus 1, minus something. 8 minus 1 is 7. How do you get to 5? You subtract 2. 
the sum of 4 minus 1 minus each term of 2 expressed as a power of 2. Now 2 as a power of 2 is just 2 to the, two to the 1. So we subtract that from 4 minus 1 and you get 2. 2 squared is 4. Add 2, you get 6. So in fact, 11 sixteenths lies at position 6 of fold 4 or position 15 of the complete fold array. All of the folds shown. And there it is. Now our quizzes can be shared. So if you're, for instance, uh, a teacher and you set your students to, to do this, they can share their results with you. Let's say they can enter obviously their own name. I've just put in some samplers here, which might be interesting. Let's go uh, Maria Agnesi. Email to uh, an appropriate person, a teacher. Now I can send it to a web page and share it in that way. Send it as an email. Now it can go straight there or you can convert it to a QR code. That's a useful way to share information, especially in a class if you don't happen to have internet access. Students or teacher can transfer their information to this form and then hold it up and read it with any smart device. I'm just going to tap on that and it will take me to my email client and the result. So this keeps a track of each of the questions the student attempts, what, what answer they submitted, whether they're correct or not, how long they spent on each part. So it's a pretty useful record. Let's return to our, um, our exploration. Back to the model. So we've seen we can, using this model, we can study the different folds, what they're like folded and unfolded. We can also switch from fraction to the order of the folds we can reset it. Finally, a quick look at this mysterious dragon curve. So if after folding you open the paper out again, we observe the paper fold sequence, a series of downward and upward folds. Each fold is opened out to create a right angled corner, or if you made it into a right angled corner, then the shape uh, has been called the dragon curve or dragon curve fractal. It grows quickly and beautifully. You can explore it here or we can explore it with our own model. Suppose for instance, well let's go five, five folds and we get this dragon curve. What about ten folds? It's best seen for an unfolded page. Now if I actually have a peek, we get we get an idea of this interesting and beautiful mathematical structure. Well, I hope you find something of interest and uh, something worthwhile exploring in this page. The web address is given, uh, is attached, and uh, please have fun.